How do you assess the, the situation with the Republican Party? The Republican Party is a deeply divided party now. Uh, I would say uh, in the aftermath of the election, you have uh, fundamentally three groups. And we really saw this begin to emerge the day after the election. It was stunning to realize that Mitt Romney, his closest political advisors, many inside and outside Republican commentators, right up until election evening itself, were confident that Romney would win and win handily. They were stunned when he lost in an electoral landslide and began to do some soul searching. But in the aftermath of that, you've got one group uh, led by Rush Limbaugh, the talk radio host, who's a very influential figure, whose basic attitude is never give up, never surrender. I don't care if we've lost four of the last five presidential elections. Uh, I don't care uh, uh, with uh, uh, popular vote majorities going the other way. Um, let me rephrase that. Uh, you've got the Rush Limbaugh crowd, the talk radio host, Never give up, never surrender. I don't care if in four of the last five presidential elections, Republicans got a minority of the popular votes. I don't care if we haven't been able to recapture the Senate. Uh, the fact is, we've got the right principles. And anybody talking about even changing on immigration, uh, we don't need to do that. After all, we've got Clarence Thomas, an African-American uh, Supreme Court justice. We've got Marco Rubio. Uh, Cuban-American in the Senate, what more do they want from us? Now, that's not a large group, but it's a very influential one because many of the people who control the media that are most dominant among Republican activists are in that camp. The second camp is one you could call the Charles Krauthammer group, Krauthammer being an influential columnist who writes for the Washington Post. And that camp says, all right, we've lost the Hispanic vote. All we need to do is get as many Hispanic American voters as George W. Bush got. Go from 30% to 40, 42%, and we can aim at 50.1% of the popular votes, and that's enough. So if we just do an immigration bill, turn amnesty from a four-letter word to a seven-letter word, flip that switch, everything will be fine. We don't have to change anything else. Now then you've got a third group, and I could call them the Jeb Bush group for the former governor of Florida, the brother uh, of former President uh, George W. Bush, and the son, of course, of George Herbert Walker Bush, a very influential Republican figure who's more pragmatic, quite conservative. But this Bush says, we're not going to win over uh, the emerging voters younger voters, much less minority voters, just by doing an immigration bill. We have to change the way we talk to them, and we have to change the focus of issues. Uh, now, you've got in that camp people like Bobby Jindal, the uh, Indian-American governor in Louisiana, who has gone so far as to call his party the stupid party, and said, let's focus on what we're doing in the states, pragmatic actions by conservatives that are actually working. You've got Chris Christie, uh, the governor of New Jersey, saying many of the same things. The former governor of Indiana, Mitch Daniels, falls in this camp. The former governor of uh, Mississippi and former chairman of the Republican uh, National uh, uh, Committee uh, is in the same uh, group. Uh, they're influential but they're not as influential as these dominant party leaders used to be. Uh, the grassroots Tea Party movement, and in that first camp you have people like Ted Cruz, the new senator from Texas, and Rand Paul, who gave the Tea Party response to uh, the uh, President's State of the Union. Uh, they don't have any intention of listening to the old establishment figures. Uh, and we're going to see a very substantial tug of war within uh, Republican Party circles that could divide the party dramatically. Now, I'd make one other point, Jim, which is uh, I can talk about the different groups of Republicans fighting with each other for dominance. The three that I mentioned are all quite conservative. Missing 
from the debate and the dialogue, by and large, is what used to be a very significant force in the Republican Party, moderate Republicans, centrist Republicans. There are none of them in the House of Representatives anymore, one or two in the Senate. But by and large, they are not a force at all. This is all a set of disputes going on within the right side of the Republican Party. Uh, Ronald Reagan had a wonderful line that he used to use whenever there were problems within his White House. And he would say, sometimes the right hand doesn't know what the far right hand is doing. And that applies now to the debate within the Republican Party.